What's up? Hey, what's good? What's popping? I am Miss Bear. Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you guys for sliding through and coming to kick it with me. As you guys can see from the title, we on this Candace journey, y'all. I'm trying to expand my mind and to see who Candace is, what she does, how she thinks, you know, not just Candace, but I'm expanding my mind in politics in general, just here and there. But anyway, as the title of this video, it is Candace Owens reacts to comments about the greatest lie ever sold. Have you guys seen the documentary? I'm just interested. I know I have not posted the reaction on my channel yet. I'm going to break it down into different parts because it is pretty lengthy. But either or, y'all, either or, have you want to say it, we're going to go ahead and get straight up into this video. y'all so we're gonna get into this video my nose is running y'all don't mind me it's cold that's why i got on this hoodie. people don't understand this they don't understand this and they do not want to let go of this race narrative because it lines the pockets of a lot of people namely black lives matter the organization which my documentary has exposed they're they're dead now they're gone black lives matter is not a thing anymore i made sure that people understood sorry, what exactly was going on while our in entire country was being torn apart by these racial narratives perpetuated by these reporters and their obsession with race everywhere. Well, now my documentary, The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, has shown you where those dollars went, where the $80 million that they raised in under one year, where it actually went. I and so wait. I want to respond to some we of you guys that have been it, tweeting at us and sending messages about the documentary. Um, it's been amazing to see the response, and this is just the beginning. So let's cover some of those responses. This person at Pro Life for All wrote, the autopsy showed no injury to his neck. Holy beep. Why did I not know this? Right? Isn't that shocking how much information was kept intentionally from the public sphere? They didn't want you to know the details of the case because they were so happy about this narrative. The whole idea that he was on his neck and that he choked to death, complete and utter crap. And they knew it was crap. Next comment comes from at Chickpea, SP, wrote, please understand the message and the organization are not synonymous. That drives me crazy. Actually, last night um, I was doing an event and I talked about the tremendous difficulty that people have with just admitting they were wrong. It takes a lot of courage to admit that you were wrong. And the reason for that is because sometimes you go so far, you're so far in your wrongness that you don't just want to completely scale back and say, yikes, I'm kind of really wrong here, right? This is sort of like the people that were deleting friends. You didn't post a black square, I'm deleting you. You're obviously a racist. You voted for Donald Trump, I'm deleting you. People were commenting people that they've known their entire lives mm -hmm. and accusing them of racism during the BLM summer of riots and protests, right? If they didn't kowtow to this narrative of George Floyd. Right. So imagine you're one of those people and you put that pressure and you deleted your friends that you grew up with off of Facebook and Instagram and you made sweeping statements. You created a status on Facebook that said, if you don't support BLM, die, right? Imagine you did all those things. Now you see my documentary and you're like, oh, yikes. Um, maybe I went a little too far. It takes courage to refriend those people, to admit that you were wrong, and to correct course. But that power is though, is just backing up a little, saying, oh, well, you know, the, the uh, movement was different than the organization. That is foolishness. Of course, it was not different from the organization. It was the free marketing firm for the organization. People were donating because they were told that it was a way to rinse themselves of this horrific crime that happened to George Floyd. So that, oh, I'm not a racist, I donated to Black Lives Matter. It's because people were wearing BLM shirts and you were meant to put a BLM flag up, right? There is nothing that is different between this. Do not allow people to lean into the cowardice of simply refusing to admit that they were wrong. Another message came from at my sunshine, HN. They wrote, where is the money? As a black woman, I am ashamed of this organization. They live by the misfortunes of others, and this is a business for them. That is correct. And you should be outraged, especially as at? a black person, because it was black pain that was used I'm to further this narrative, right? They were willing to hide behind black people. 
like for their shields so that people wouldn't look at what they were doing behind the scenes. Next up is from at RMFire64. He writes, wow, just wow, Candace. I never liked Tegan, that's Chrissy Tegan, but she and Jen Atkin and Dana Omari have shown themselves to be really bad people. I was going to listen to this while painting, but I can't take my eyes off the screen. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. If you watch the documentary, you will see that for whatever reason, Chrissy Teigen just can't help it. If there's a way to bully and to make someone feel bad and to try to drive someone to suicide, which she has done in other scenarios. It's crazy because um, that's not the first time I've heard about Chrissy Teigen. And I'm actually just shocked because I didn't take her for that type of person. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know she was out here doing things like that. But at the same time, it's just up for me to like research and kind of just see the different things. But it's not the first time I've heard this. It seems that she likes to jump at the opportunity. She's first in line. And there were a lot of people that she could have bullied and no one would have paid attention to because she was hiding behind a black square, figuratively speaking. Well, I paid some attention to it. And I'm glad that you were equally as disgusted by what she did and what Jen Atkin did and what Dana Omari did. Next is from at Baby Blue, TTU. He wrote, I thought this doc was great. I also loved how Candace personally helped Floyd's roommates. That was the best part for me, the interview with them. Speaking on that, that was the most surprising part of the journey of this documentary. Uh, what you guys don't get to see is that we, I particularly was terrified going into their house. The team was on high alert. We didn't know, they didn't know that I was going to be interviewing them. Uh, throughout much of this documentary, particularly when we were in the autonomous zones, I was wearing a bulletproof vest. So the team was on edge. We didn't really know what to expect. They could have screamed at me. They could have tried to hurt me or hit me. And I was so, so wrong, so proven wrong. They were so kind hearted. I, I felt, I remember walking out of the house and thinking, wow, those two individuals felt like they were my aunt and uncle. Like they felt like a family member to me. And it allowed me to actually tell the story, not from the place of somebody who is enraged at how this country was torn apart, mm -hmm. but as somebody who was actually feeling sympathetic that some people really lost a friend, someone that they loved. George Floyd was somebody that they loved. Right. No matter what the situation is, how it happened, how this or that, no matter what, it's just always a loss to uh, the, the parents. The, the kids, the wife, the friends, the, you know, the list goes on. It's always a loss, like regardless of what it is, a life loss, it, it makes a significant impact in other people's lives, even if it might not matter to us or not saying that, oh, the death don't matter, but I'm saying like, we don't know them like that to like, just grieve them like this and do that and do that. So the, I, I agree. Respect, irrespective of his flaws, his tremendous flaws. Um, and I think that that is actually what made the documentary greater. Frank Moran is getting things done. It's Huge getting things in done. Indiana's We're not about economy. to talk about the Frank. Next from Mike Wayne. I'm an African living in Zimbabwe and I fully support what you are doing, Kenneth. Black Americans need to wake up. They don't know how good they have it. Here we survive on a dollar a day and two meals if you are lucky. Teachers have been on strike for five years or more. Keep teaching them and I hope one day they will wake up. Yes, it is true. Uh, black Americans do not realize how privileged they are to live in this country, and it's hard for them to recognize it when the media keeps telling them the exact opposite, mm -hmm. um, that you are not privileged at all, and that your circumstances that you live in are not your own doing, but the doing of some white supremacist narrative um, uh, that mm -hmm. is permeating throughout American culture, and that simply is not true. It is the lie that is disadvantaging black Americans, and mm -hmm. it is why African American immigrants are always successful when they come to this country uh, when weighed against the successes of black Americans who have been here forever. So if this country was going to punish you based on the color of your skin, right, then wouldn't African immigrants be punished? Okay, why are they doing so well? Next from S. Moore, he wrote, it always blows my mind how people are allowed to go after Candace, a black woman who speaks her mind and they say horrible, terrible things about her. Things that if anyone said about any other person of color, they would be blown off Twitter and Facebook in a heartbeat. I guess it's the old thing. If not for double standards, they would have no standards at all. That is true, but I am used to it. And I'm just glad that I'm able to be here and to show people how hypocritical they are, to show them 
that they are not genuine in their intent to want to platform black Americans and just give them attention, uh, uh, you know, just give them a shot at success in America and to have black voices heard. It's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to use black American emotion to further their own causes. And it is why they find me to be so problematic because I refuse to be a voice to anything but the truth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you There's have not yet seen that. the documentary, I hope you are realizing now that you need to. It is exclusively on Daily Wire Plus, and so is the next portion of the show. I'll be talking about the new video that just surfaced of Nancy Pelosi from January 6th, on the day of January 6th. So if you're not a member yet, go ahead and click the link in the description. All right, y'all. So we're going to end the video right there like that because she's ending the video anyway. Um... Yeah, I don't know why I'd be thinking these comments are gonna be a little bit more of something, but it's actually I said actually it's actually you know it's nice to hear her thoughts as well, um and to like read other people's thoughts as well to see what their take was and you know the questions that they may have. So it's pretty interesting. This whole Black Lives Matter exposed situation is very very interesting. We're gonna take an even deeper dive, y'all. So I hope that you guys. I know it wasn't too much. You know, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this reaction video just as much as I enjoyed reacting to it. Y'all, don't forget to thumbs up this video and comment down below. Give me more things that you guys would like to see me react to. And also, guys, don't forget. What was I about to say? Y'all, I'm over here. My mind is like, doo-doo-doo, it's over here, it's over here, it's over there. Like, I'm doing too much inside. But as always, guys, thank you so much for sliding through and coming to vibe out with me. On the way out, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and ring that bell so when I drop a video, you guys won't miss it. You will know you'll be right here. And until next time, y'all.